Hey everyone, it's Joe Glines from The Automator, and surprise, uh, Isaiah is back. Uh, he had taken yeah. a little personal leave. Yeah. It's really great having you back, man. Um, and uh, I'm really excited to be able to get back to work and, and to do some stuff. We, we've both been talking about some things. And also, by the way, you know, we had talked about doing like consulting or project work. So now we have some bandwidth. So if, if someone has something they, they want some help with, uh, you know, feel free to reach out to me. I'll put my email on here. But um, what I want to touch on a little bit is, you know, you were gone for, we actually were discussing that earlier. Was it like nine, uh, seven, seven months? months. Yeah, yeah wow. that's, that's right. Yeah. So during that time, of course, you weren't sitting at home twiddling your thumbs. Um, no. You were doing some other work. Right, and that's right. Part of that, you were discussing a little bit about the uh, the mindset of some of the people. Oh, that's what it was. People were saying um, either Dominicans or whoever, just certain types of people don't have like a work ethic kind of thing or right. the mindset, like they, they were lazy or something like that. So right. let me, let me go ahead and, and right. set up the context. Yes, thank you. So uh, when I left, uh, I needed to do something with some uh, the the how is it called the insurance in here? That's the reason why I actually I'm too had cheap. To, yeah, <laughs> it's actually cheaper in here. <laughs> but in general, um, I needed to enter into the, the workforce to get access to the um, uh, insurance. And um, in there, I was in a call center. Now, here in Dominican Republic, a lot of the uh, this is kind of like the rising thing in here is having a lot of call centers working for companies out, uh, uh, outside of Dominican Republic. Um, for the company outside of Dominican Republic, it is cheaper because here they have to, they would pay less and they do not have many regulations that you have in the United States, like sick leave and pay time off and stuff like that. But in here, it doesn't work the same. Now, having that context in that I'm working for people who work for Americans, um, we actually get to see a lot of Americans and a lot of information about American workers. And one of them, uh, one of the trainers uh, right next to me was like, holy crap, I'm seeing these guys that they have paid time off. And in their system, I could, uh, I could see how many days they had available. And if you don't take it, they would accumulate for that particular company. And they had like <laughs> some people with... 400 accumulated days, like they never took it. Like they never take time off. They never take sick time. They never take uh, paid time off and so on. And uh, for him, it was like, come on, here in Dominican Republic, it's just so it, the sky gets gray and you have like 20 people missing job, right? Like they don't come to work. <laughs> and um, Mondays, Mondays, you have a lot of people missing as well. And you're like, hold on, Mondays is the worst, you know, like you have to have a, a, a everybody here. Why are they missing? A lot of them are simply drunk. <laughs> they were drunk on the weekend. They don't come to work on Monday. Or for any stupid reason, they just get a, a medical license and they don't go to work. But, uh, and then he was drawing the conclusion, like, okay, hold on. The thing is that Dominicans are lazy and Americans are not. <laughs> So uh, from my perspective that I have worked with Americans and with Dominicans, I would say, no, no, that's not it. You know, and I, and I had the, the luck of living in Germany for a little while. And so being outside of this country gave me a little bit of a perspective. What I noticed is in first world countries, and I would say it in quotation marks because that's changing <laughs> all the time is changing, but, um, Compared to more developed countries, um, in Germany at least, I didn't have to think about food or water or power. And I was not a German person. I arrived there and less than a week, the government said, oh, you're unemployed, here's money. You know, like, just like that. And it was, it was not like a lot of money, but it covered the basics. And the basics were good. You have power 24-7. You never worry about it. You had uh, gas for the heating system. So when winter came, you didn't have to think about it. It was there. Um, and life in general had a very nice standard. And one way that I actually told my friend to think about it is, okay, when you go to the street, you go out of the, uh, to the streets, 
just start walking on a sidewalk and tell me how far you can get without getting off the sidewalk. For you, that would make no sense at all because you get in the sidewalk and you reach your destination on the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. Dominican Republic is way different. Mm -hmm. Here, your basic needs are not met, so you don't know what you're going to eat tomorrow, literally. Like tomorrow, you don't know. Um, there's so much going on in the streets that you're all the time stressed. And to the point that I was just making, like the most simple stuff, like just walking on the sideway, on the sideway is not straightforward because you go on the sideway, either it's broken and you have to go a step outside or it is, there is no sideway. You have to, you have to go uh, on the, on the street or there's people doing stuff on the sidewalk that shouldn't be there. Like they park their motorbikes in there. They start playing dominoes in there. Actually, motorbikes drive on the sidewalk regularly. You are walking and somebody from behind comes, like you're walking and a bike comes. And if it was like he comes in a, in a low speed, no, they go like if they were on the streets and you have to watch out, right? So, and not to mention, they rob you for anything, anything. <laughs> they rob you anyway. So if you hear a motorbike behind you, you best turn around and see what it is because they're going to rob you. <laughs> That's how it is. So you are in a constant high alert, like all the time. You're always on high alert. And let me let me interject here because it's in, in your it's really fascinating to me. But it, it <laughs> like you said here. It, I think it has a lot to do with what you just touched on, safety and security. I know if I have $100 in my wallet, it's not just going to disappear. You, you know what I mean? Or I'm not going to have this. It's, I have the security and safety. So it, it allows me a lot of, one is, A, just the stress and relaxation. And, and I've read a lot about how when you are stressed, you make bad decisions or whatever. But the other one, which is what you're touching on now, is if I don't know, if I don't spend this money tomorrow, I may not have it two days later. So it, it really encourages, and that's where it gets back to that mindset of like, which actually reminds me, I'm going to put a link in this video or after it for, a, it's a five minute audio clip that it's like five minutes that can change your life. Like it's that mm -hmm. fundamental stuff, but it really gets to understanding, you know, look at, understand the, the context and everything of when other people, you think they're crazy with what they do, but when you start having some empathy and understand where they're coming from, yeah. often it makes it's sense. Different. Yeah. It's different. So, so then you have this. So, so um, you think about, um, okay, very bad parts of your neighborhood that you mm -hmm. wouldn't go around alone, right? Mm -hmm. and then you say, well, I get home, I'm safe. Here, not even at home, you're safe. Actually, right. uh, and I forgot to tell you, I, I actually mentioned one of the stories. Like I, uh, this this woman, oh, one yeah. of the agents, right? She lived in a second story floor. Or she she was on the second floor, and one night she just woke up with somebody with a gun pointed at her head. She, she lived alone with her two sons, and. On the second floor, not they did not come in through the door. They came in from, from one of the windows because here, I don't know if you can tell, I have some bars on the windows, mm. right? Yeah. So that's because I live in the You're first in, floor. Oh, I thought you were in jail. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I live on the second floor. And, and, wow. and she doesn't – you go to the fourth floor in here and you still have the bars. And you're like, come on, it is a fourth right. floor. Who might right. they do? <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Like wow. they do. And, and and that's one of the, the, the biggest things. Not even at home. You're not safe, not even at home. So basically, this girl, she had the misfortune of being robbed at home. She lives alone with two children. They she doesn't have a husband. She got in. Now she's she would be traumatized at home. Right. You see what right. I mean? Sure. You see, yeah. so, you're not so safe anywhere. Yeah. You're not safe anywhere. Now, here's the thing. I didn't uh, get the chance to tell you this one. When I was uh, on Monday, when I was quitting there, there was one guy that he was one of the agents that I actually did shadow with. So nice. uh, as a trainer, I had to listen to their calls and guide them through it. And he's a very happy guy. And, you know, he was just okay. But 
on Monday, I saw him and the guy was not happy. He was totally down, like you could tell. And, and he's, yeah. he's one of these gay guys that are very flurry, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. he's like that. But he was not like that. He was totally serious. And I was like, what the hell? And, and I was with some girls and we asked him, like, what happened? Now, here's the thing. His arm was totally, like, scratched. Like, he had very big marks of something. And he just said, like, no, I was mugged on Friday. And I was like, why do you have your hand? Oh, yeah. because the guy didn't have a knife or something. What he had was a bottle. He, he broke a bottle and he was mugging him with that. When he said no, yeah. the guy started punching at him, you know? Wow. So he got totally scratched and a lot of things. Out of, out of the blue, he was not expecting that. And that's the thing. So you never know when it's going to happen. And, and it is not like you imagine it. I, I saw two examples in seven months. Yeah. Beside the ones that I don't know about. Okay. Yeah. Now, I'm sorry. What does that have to do with anything? Okay. So as these guys are completely stressed to the maximum, they cannot plan ahead because they don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. The money from the job usually depends on a bonus structure that you lose the right. bonus for anything. <laughs> so, so right. just, Case in point, if you miss four hours of work, you lose the bonus. Okay, fine. You know, true, true story. It's, that's how it was for me too. Like, yeah, if you miss four days of work, you uh, lose the bonus. It's COVID time. Everybody has to go ahead and do a test for the COVID. Well, for going to the test, you have to miss work. Well, you bring your license, okay? You say, hey, I'm going to do the COVID test because you told me to. The company says you have to. I go with the license. Yeah, you still lose the bonus anyways. Why? Because you miss you miss four hours of work. That's how it is. Like, which, and there is no yeah. way. <laughs> yeah, which gets back to the whole thing about a bonus is it it it, need, it can't be a given. You can't always get it in order for the effective true. right. What the bonus right. should drive behavior to be more productive usually right. That's right. And, you can't always get it, but you also have to be able to actually get it, right? And if if they make it in a way where you can't actually get it, then you, why would you work at all? Or at it? least, or at least that the reasons why you lose it are not so yeah. in um, your control, yeah, or, or that they're not inconsiderate. Because I do understand that it is out of my control if I get sick. Why would I lose the bonus that I already did? Because I understand the new one. No, you're not going to get it, okay? Because, yeah, you're not working because you're not working. I get it. But the one that I already do, I already did, because they do have this type of structure in which you get the bonus every two weeks. So if I have worked two weeks and now I'm going to get paid, but the last day of those two weeks I missed that day, I lose the two weeks bonus. And for yeah. people in sales, it's worse. People in sales, they, they do get commissions, and if you do one bad thing, so you have accumulated, I don't know, $500 in commissions, for example. And if you mm. miss that one day, you lose the whole bonus, right? That, yeah, uh, that's how it is. Why? Because you already, you already, anyway, so bringing it back in, I mean, it, it's fascinating, right? But um, <laughs> it, what is for, for all of us who live in um, whatever, however you want to phrase it, other countries where, or actually, because not all, companies do that uh, you're in in the Dominican Republic right it's just it is sound like it was the norm from talking to you but some might have better policies and that's the whole thing like even here in the states some of them will be crazy and some are normal right it's, well ERC or that company that I work for is one of the best companies in here so you're you're mm, wow. listening to the best options that you might get especially if you're if you don't speak and another language. If you only speak Dominican, then yeah, you're out of luck, you know. <laughs> so, so well, it's back to yeah, right. go ahead. But here, um, I will explain all of that to try to try to sympathize with the Dominican. So, if you live a life like that, and you are working just for going to work, which is mainly what is happening, you work for food, transport, and you know, being able to buy some things to manage you cannot buy a car with that money you cannot buy a house with that money it's just for working okay um 
just for surviving. If you're like that and it reaches the weekend, what are you going to do? Yeah. Okay, right. weekend is off. What are you going to do? Are you going to stay home? No, you have to blow some steam. You do yeah. have you have to because here in Dominican Republic, this idea of uh, um, mental health is still not like a, a very widely a accepted thing. You should have friends for that, is what they would say. Well, um, yeah, your friends are going to tell you that they're going to drink until 4 a.m. in the morning. What are you going to do? You're going to stay home? <laughs> well, no, you're going to go and drink until 4 a.m. in the morning. That's what you're going to do. <laughs> that goes back to what you said. When people are stressed, they do bad decisions because it is a bad decision to do that on a Sunday when you have to work on Monday. Right. And that is going to affect right. your bonus, which is going to affect how much you get paid, which is going to make you get some loans, which is going to actually make you more stressed. You see what I mean? I would say 60% of the people that I met live on a loan basis. And I was actually forced to do that twice in seven months. And I decided, okay. no, you know, I, I, it's impossible. I had to do it because of my situation, right. but that, that's impossible. You can't. How do you do that? Well, yeah, people do it here well, every day. Yeah. And it's, but it's, and it, the thing is, you know, which I was telling you too, right? You you have a very strong work ethic, right? You show up on time and this that, and 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 again, but again, you're you know, and part of it's education, I think, and mindset. But you're still somehow dealing. You're in that situation where, in, in which you finally also said, "Screw you," you know, like I, if I can't get the bonus, you're not going to cut me any slack. Why would I continue to work for you? Like it, it's a bad, you know, it's a no win situation. Right. So anyway, um, I'm lucky that the, I had a different option. Yeah. People right. Don't have right. any options. Right. Like if you don't have any other option, what do you do? You have to go to work anyways. Yeah. So which which gets back to, yeah. Which gets back to even for people anywhere. Right. It's, it's no matter what your situation, which is the way I was too. Like if, if life sucks, you know, generally speaking, unless you pull yourself up and try to improve yourself in some way or whatever to change your circumstances, it's going to continue to suck. You know what I mean? If, if you keep doing the same thing you've been doing for the last five years, why would it change? Like the odds of something changing better is sadly are very small, right? That and is right. That's what I've realized with people that work with AutoHotKey, all of us, because sadly, and it drives me batty, businesses – don't pay you to go to auto hockey school, right? To learn how to automate. <laughs> no, they don't. You have to do it. It's yourself. ludicrous, but they yeah. don't. Um, so this is why I'm like, I have such a bond when I've talked to enough people and I realize like all of us have this self-driven, we're going to find a better way to do X or Y because I'm not going to just give up on life, right? Like and, and give up in my situation. That was where I had some really mundane tasks that I'm like, there's no way I'm doing this manually. You know, I'm going to find a way <laughs> to do it. <laughs> But, um, uh, and, and for, you know how 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 it gets sometimes in those companies that bureaucracy or if they don't have the best tool and they don't want to pay for another one you you're you you are stuck with a very bad tool that makes you do a lot of manual work and corporate does not want to change that and you have to do it anyways right uh, well or even B which is I'm sure you at times have tried to show people not even out of hockey just simple things like we were talking the other day of having a long document and the other guy is looking through it and scrolling and scrolling and you're like you just have to control left. Left. right little tips right where like you could show and be like hey i can get our entire workforce much more productive and they might say some might say that's awesome. Well, if you want to do it, but we're not going to pay you anything extra, right? You might get that, but I bet you a lot of them would just say, that's not your job. That's not what we yeah, hired that's what you. They would say like, no, 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 just do what we told you. So, so case in point, I, I was supposed to be um, reporting. I had to do a report uh, every day. Um, these guys, my supervisor, a girl was finding it that she liked it doing it on word. Okay, so this report, she was actually typing everything manually there. You had to find out how many people came in from the class, you know, how many attended, who did not, the reason why did, they didn't attend, and so on. And you would have these issues that sometimes the count, the head count, would say 
uh, 10 out of 10. So everybody came in. And below, when you read, there's one of them that didn't come because he was sick. So the head count was wrong because he was sick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. you had this issue. Yeah. I arrive. I see where the problem is. I cannot use auto hotkey, which I would like to, but the system was not set up for that. Okay, let's use Excel. So in Excel, I copy the whole thing. It looks exactly the same. But those fields, I just made them, you know, automated. So if I said somebody absent, it would automatically change the headcount up there, right? So those kind of things. Oh, so she found out that I was using Excel. And she was like, no, you cannot do that. And I'm like, yes, I can. You haven't. You haven't even seen the difference up to now because right. you just sat right next to me and you saw it. But if you were not there, you wouldn't notice the difference. So yes, I can. Um, and, and they use Excel for many other things. The only thing is that she wanted me to use that and she's the supervisor. And I'm like, right. oh, well, you know, right. power. <laughs> yeah. You know, and I'm like, yeah, okay. But yeah. no, <laughs> yeah. it's not going to work. <laughs> but yeah, it is. Uh, being on the workforce, especially when you have a different mindset, is really tricky. It's really you know, it. I'm really glad you actually gave that little story because it's. It, I didn't put my finger on it before, but it it really is because it's it's so me because because I'd be like, oh okay, and then of course I would still do it my way. I, I'm a rebel. I'm like, you know what? I just don't give a crap like what you tell me. I'll say, uh huh. It and works. Then, you know, I, I I love the phrase. You know, it's better to ask forgiveness than permission. Right? right, like I will just do stuff, whatever. But I think it's also a very common thing amongst people who are using auto hotkey because a lot of times, you know, when the IT or whoever people find out about it, you, you know, you're like, oh my, you can't have that, you yeah, know? I'm like, they're, why they're, not? Yeah. yeah. Um, and then you're like, well, okay, well, we we you can't install it. I'm like, okay, you don't actually have to install auto hotkey to, to use it. So whatever. It's okay. but, um, but yeah, that's another nice little. I need to mark that in my little mindset of like the who the target audience is for when we're doing stuff. Is that do you have that rebel attitude, right? Of like, you know what? <laughs> you no, know, it's I just it's like a, I'm not gonna do this weird task you're asking me about. Right. That particularly painful way that you're asking me about. Right. I would just try to make it a little less painful. That's okay, if that's okay with you. Um, but yeah, um, it, when I was talking to my friend regarding that difference between mindsets and how it, you know, then he came into this realization of, okay, hold on. Yeah, it's not that we're lazy. It's that we are, you know. It's different. Yeah, it's totally. It's we are stressed. We're right. stressed to the maximum. I bet any American would come here and work under those under those conditions, and would jump ship right away because it's not that simple. Well, I think I told you when we were chatting about this a little bit. You know, here I, I had seen this thing that you know a lot of uh, minorities in certain areas have you know, males have life expectancy of like twenty five. Yeah, and then know. people wonder why they're out doing these crimes and not going to college. You're like, they don't expect to live to, you know, a couple of years after they graduate high school, if they even graduate high school, right? Like, why would you think that they're going to, you know, go to college and do all this? Like, they that's so outside of their mindset. It makes no sense Actually, for them. Just saying that I, I yesterday before yes, the day before yesterday, I read something. I don't usually follow like rappers and stuff like that, but there was an article that said this guy wanted beef until he died with um, 50 Cent. So 50 Cent is famous rapper, and mm -hmm. this other rapper wanted to have beef with him until he mm -hmm. died. Mm -hmm. And the, and when he was doing the interview, he was actually mentioned, like, yeah, I saw Tupac and Biggie, those are two other rappers that mm -hmm. got shot. And he was like, yeah, I saw that. And as a rapper, I understood that that's what is going to happen to me. Oh, so right. for that reason, I was just rapping and looking for trouble yeah. until that happened. Yeah. Now he changed his mindset. And that's to the point that you were saying, like, right. there's a lot of people who are not expecting to live that long. So they would do crazy shit yeah, because right. they don't, they're not, they're not going to live that yeah. long. The point is to us, to us, it's crazy. Right. For them, for it them, makes for perfect them, it's logical sense because why would you do this? And that that's that audio clip I'm remember putting here. It's like, and it's it's really helpful. Also, it's another thing I wish a lot of Americans could do is understand, talk to people from other countries and realize what life is like in their country and realize how in the states we have it so good, right? In so many and, places, 
It's, and it's, it's so hard for them to change their mentality once they come to the United States. So when oh, they come yeah. into the United States, they come in with that mentality and they don't realize how how it's going to affect them. I remember this person who sure. was trying to trying to go out of uh, paying their, uh, you know, child support. So <laughs> they, they they were on a, on one uh, on one uh, job, and okay, they got hit with the the child support from the court, right? And they decided to change jobs. Oh, so when yeah. they change jobs, they and in this country yeah. it would be like that. If you're in one job and they're taking some money out, you go to another job, that's gone. Right. But they didn't realize <laughs> that you <laughs> when you go to another place. Right. It's going to happen exactly the same. And, and then they were calling us totally mad. Like, why are you taking this money? And I'm like, yeah, because you have right. a child support <laughs> order <laughs> that right. it doesn't matter where you go is going to be right. taken out of your check, uh, paycheck. And those are the type of things that I noticed, like these yeah. people get into the United States and they don't know how it works. And they come with the baggage that they already had, how it worked prior to that and they think it's going to work yeah. the same but it's not yeah it's a really interesting point because in, in some ways like what you just described that's a good thing right because it hey if my baggage is going to follow me around i'm going to probably be a better person because you know i there's they, ramifications they are there's, accountable there's, yeah it's the whole They're thing with like you know when people who are god fearing right i mean that's i fear you know i don't fear this up but i fear what's going to happen after i die like that's a really long-term thing you know what i mean um what is to me is a little difficult is let's say you know how does someone with because in california which is where i'm from they have the whole three strikes thing in your you know three strikes and you're screwed right you go to jail for life right how does someone start over when they've already screwed up and you can't move away you can't do whatever like you know you're just screwed like it, it, i i kind of see the point also of it's good to have a, at least somewhere some way that someone can start over because if you don't have that Someone who's already bad, what good, what, why do they have any reason to do good? Okay, right? so I mean, you, 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 do, you do bring up a good point. And for example, in Dominican Republic, you have this system of informal businesses. In United States, for you to have a business, you have to be licensed, register, mm -hmm. you have a registration for that. You know, you have to have a lot of things. Here, you do have that for paying taxes, right? But there are certain types of businesses, which are the, the small businesses, who can operate without being registered. Uh, and, and the government is not going to close you. Right. Because not many people can do that. Same happens with, in my situation, my credit is bad since I was 18 because of an issue that I had when I was a kid. Yeah. That I didn't know how to handle. My credit yeah. is bad. Yeah. I could, I, my life has been very difficult because of that. Yeah. But here, there are certain institutions that allow you to open certain types of credit cards right. that you wouldn't right. be able to do it yeah. on a normal bank just to help you. Those right. are kind of things that are set up in a way that allow you. But for example, on United States, I know that there is this law that, I don't know if all states have this, but you cannot do paycheck loans is what it's called. Yeah, so, so we can, some states, you can do it, some you can't. Some states, okay. So, so, but in here, everybody can do it. And, and there's <laughs> yeah. this, this weird, I, I tried it once and I, I saw the, the, the yeah. shit. Yeah. <laughs> so, so here's yeah. the thing. They take yeah. away your, your debit card. They take it as a, yeah. uh, as a collateral, right? Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. So they take your debit card and they tell you that their percentage is 10%. So it sounds good. But here's the kicker is <laughs> 10% of what you owe at that moment. So you took, say, $100, right? The first payment that you have to do, you do it whatever payment you want to do. So he tells you, you can pay however you want. Okay, yeah. so I'm gonna do a $20 payment. Yeah. So on your first payment is gonna be the $20 plus the 10% of the 100. So, you know, $30, so fine. The second payment is gonna be $20 again but it's going to be the 10% of what is left. So it is $80. So it's going to be $8 instead. Yeah. So, so it is actually adding up. And at, at the end, you're paying 25% or 30% of what you owed. And you don't well, even notice because they're telling you it's just 10%. Well, it, but I think what you're describing is more is like, how often is it compound, right? Is it, because for us, it's, it's, you know, 
the ten percent would be per year, and you divide it out oh, where no, it's no, one no. point whatever. Yeah, and <laughs> no, but here's not like that. That's the thing. Here, as yeah. we don't have those laws. Yeah, they do whatever they want. It's ten percent every time you pay. You know, <laughs> so oh. if you pay, so, so you're 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 screwing yourself up when you take that loan, but you don't know it because financial uh, uh, education here is very low. So, but if we had laws to prevent that. Everybody would be screwed because people right. here will not get loans from a bank because their credit is screwed. Right. Where right. do you get the loan from? So right. the government, I don't know how they do it, but I think they decide not to put laws on that because they know that if they put a law on that, yeah. everybody would be yeah. affected by it, you know? So, right. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you so, know, I hope, yeah. Th- um, that was really fascinating. Uh, um, you, Jackie and I talk a lot about Denmark and the U.S., and it's always really, really interesting of the differences. Um, I wish he was here because he could have mentioned a little bit about Denmark and how they do stuff. Because as you said, in Germany, like Denmark, it's even more things are provided by default. Of course, they have higher taxes than we do here. But it's right. it's really interesting of his level of comfort for like having a job and having health care and having college for him or the kids is crazy high, right? It's all like basically provided, but they have really high taxes on some things. A lot of them are similar to me. I'm actually kind of like um, very surprised whenever you guys say about high taxes. And I see, uh, as far as I remember on your end, it would be like 8%, the, the, the tax for, um, when you when you buy stuff like this service sales tax yeah. the sales tax is like eight percent right um here is 18 percent and 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 this is the thing so we get extremely high t- and they're thinking about raise, rising it soon so uh in here you have extremely high taxes the system the financial system is screwed everywhere every most of the people do not have any financial knowledge. So we are in this perpetual circle of not advancing. You cannot advance. Only a, a few people advance in here if they're lucky, if they come from a family that already has established something. Resources, you don't. Yeah. yeah. So if you're someone like me who was not born into an, it doesn't have to be like a rich family. It just has to be a family that has a few things, like some properties. If they already have some properties, you already are good to go because you don't have to pay for rent. Which in here, the rent. Gotcha. You see what you see what I mean? Out of the rat race. Yeah, I get it. Exactly. So you already have this situation in which you do not have to pay for rent. You're almost good to go. Um, Mm -hmm. You have a car. Your father has a car. Uh, You don't have to be paying for public transportation. You're almost good to go. If you're somewhere like me, I don't have a house. I don't have a car. On my thirties right? 37. I don't have any of those. My father doesn't have that. So now you're stuck in here until uh, you die. <laughs> the only thing that you can do is get loans. That's the only thing you can do. Well, that would be the only thing because hopefully, you know, with working with me and, and uh, wow. we'll get, you know, bigger projects and this and that, that you'll end up making a lot more money and, and that could be an out, right? But I understand Compared to the general population, like that's, that's what I was not... going to say. Like in my case, I learned out of hotkey, and I'm oh, doing in, something in with English, it. right? In English, right? Not alone. Yeah. You have other people who have never actually learned English, let alone programming or anything right. higher. And actually, even the people who have learned, I remember at that job, I saw many people who have been into one of the most the, the most prestigious university here, which is the most expensive one, and so on. And they're they are taking calls. Right. You know what I mean? So I'm like, what do you do with your studies? Uh, Yeah. Do you you recall? I don't think we talked about this. Do you recall a movie, Moscow on the Hudson? (laughs) No, I haven't heard of that one. It's a, it's a late eighties movie. If I remember right with Robin Williams and he, he was in Russia and he, you know, comes over with the circus because he's in the circus, but a third of it roughly is in Russia. And he, you know, they show a lot of like what life is like, you know, and mm. it's a lot like what you're describing of just the, you know, people who were really high educations do whatever job you can possibly get the waiting in lines for all the food and stuff. Mm-hmm. It was really, it struck me. See, I saw it when I was in high school as a kid and I still remember, I watched it just the other night again, just cause I'm, I'm like, you know, I should rewatch that. And I remembered a lot of it just cause it, 
it was so crazy to me, you know, of like, how is this possible? Um, but yeah, it was a really, really good movie, chilling movie, but good movie. But yeah. funny how you say it, like it was crazy for you. And then when I was, you know, as a trainer, I was yeah. listening to these people, American uh, people who were working with their companies for 10, 15, 25 years. Yeah, right, right. They sounded very young yeah. to me. Like they were like, what, 35 years old? And then I hear like, I've been 18 years with, with my company. And I'm like, yeah. I didn't tell you this. You do that? The other day, I didn't mention this to you. At TI, you know, like <laughs> I, I get in early, right? And one of the reasons is I hate traffic, but I also want to park close because these are really, really, really big buildings. Uh -huh. And they had all these gold painted parking spots. I mean, like hundreds, you know, in front of the buildings. And, it, and on it, it shows it's for people who've been there 20 years or more, right? So Just if you've been there 20 years or more, you get to park you get closer. Park <laughs> But they had so much of their core, you know, employees had been that way. They were always full. I mean, it was, it's like, that yeah, like you're saying, that, right? That, that like, is something. Wow. And then, and then, and then for me, that's crazy. I'm like, how, I've never, I, right. I've, I have, personally, I haven't met many people, many Dominicans that have been many years in one job. So uh, most of them, especially in call center uh, business, they jump around very often. One year, seven months tops. Well, you know what? Yeah. See here in the States, and I, I just wrote it somewhere. Um, oh, I remember now. Anyway, there's a saying, you know, you don't quit your job, you quit your boss. Right. And in the States, I think that's very, very accurate 90% of the time, probably. Right. Yeah. I will bet you money. It's still somewhat for you, but not nearly half as often, you know, for you, often people do quit the job because they're like, this place sucks, you know, right. in general. It's it would be problems. more because the, the location more than the, than the people. So, yeah. um, in any case, I do, um, Oh, oh, if you wouldn't mind, because I, if you don't mind sharing this, you told me a little bit about your, your, your daily job, like the, the commute and mm. what you did when you were, you're supposed to be training, but if you couldn't train. So do you mind uh, talking a yeah. little about that? Just so people have an idea of like, yeah, how crazy so, it was. So here's the thing. Um, and, and they, they wanted me there to stay for the long haul, right? They wanted me. So this is a company that wants me to stay for the long haul. Okay. So keep that in mind when I give you the context, right? So it goes like, first of all, I live very far away. Okay. So I'm in a very far location from the center of the city, not their fault. Fine. Um, to get there, I have to take public transportation. And I showed you, I don't know if you have a picture in there that we could actually share. But right. basically, public transportation in here is not what just popped in your mind. In your mind, it was like, you know, a bus or something or a cab, right? It's not like that in here. In here is very public. It means a sedan car, very old, beaten up sedan car, um, which is for four people, two on the front and two on the back. That's, you know, the normal. It's actually used a different way. You put four people on the back as you cram them. And that's the funny thing. It, it, it is like this. Like, so you open one door. The first guy goes in the window. He's the, he has the best seat, actually. Second comes in. He also has a good seat. The third person in is the screwed one. So right. this guy has to actually pull on to the front. And he's going to be just sitting on the, on the edge of the, of the seat with the legs open or something like that. Like whatever, however he fits in, he has to push in a little bit. The no. fourth person is also screwed. He has to come into the side like that. And they're just kind of squished in there. That's, that's the back seat. And if you think that's what where it ends, no, no, the front seat, you have to cram two people in there. <laughs> so <laughs> you have to keep now. Depending on the car, you have an issue <laughs> because right. some cars are stick driven and that's pain in the ass because basically you're touching the other guy, right? And some other cars are just crammed in there. There's this. Sorry, hold on one second because you said two, but you, so you're meaning in addition to the driver? In addition to the driver. Yeah, so the driver seat, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the driver seat is there, but the yeah. second one, the passenger seat, you're going to cram two people in there. 
Right. So there's <laughs> you know, seven like, people in the car. Right. Yeah. Funny thing, they don't care if you're fat or not. Right. There's of course. Four and right. two. Right. You're fat. I don't care. You have to go in there. You know, like it doesn't make any sense. So basically, that's how I have to drive every day. Buses are no no different. They're worse. <laughs> but you have to drive in there. But there's a lot of traffic. So I, I was spending like about one hour and 45 minutes to get there most of the time, just to get there in the morning. On good days, let's say it was a good day. It was not a Monday. You would do like, I don't know, uh, about an hour to get there. And that's, that's like your good days, right? Yeah. So that, and, and that was, that travel was not the whole thing. I was getting there to get to the metro station to go like five stops which was about 15 minute drive as well. So, and then after I get there into the stop, I had to walk five minutes. Of that. So, so that was just the whole going part. Right. If you go backwards, it would be the same with all the traffic because if you go out of the, you know, on, on, on the most, the high, the peak time, you would get so much traffic. It doesn't matter going or coming. So most of the times what I did is that I just waited out one or two hours yeah, that's smart. good so so and then right. get there in about 45 minutes to my home so it was a lot it was a long day much. now now here's the thing i'm a trainer trainings happen in sections so i have a training for two weeks or one week after the training it sometimes there was no training well not sometimes most of the times there was no training until a new one started so that was two weeks of doing all that going there to do nothing so it was just sitting there. Doing Clarify nothing. the nothing, because this is the crazy part. No, but here's the thing. So I had to punch in, punch out, right? So I punch in. I go there. I ask my supervisor, okay, what should I do? Okay, just help this person. It's 15 minutes work. I finish that. Okay, what else? There's nothing else. I was literally just sitting there doing absolutely But you cannot actually use the computers to do something else. Like, you cannot just go ahead and... Uh, work on your projects. I could not just p- p- launch Zoom in here and start with you. Like, you know, right. I couldn't do that. So I, I, right. I was supposed to do ERC related work, but there was no work. Okay, let's go ahead and do the following. Um, let's find what to do. So they, <laughs> in their infinite wisdom, had some, <laughs> some dominoes tables <laughs> in different floors. So <laughs> There were some people who just spent many hours just playing there. Well, could you even like, said you couldn't bring a book, right? You couldn't bring a pen and oh, paper. Oh, no, you cannot, you cannot bring paper into the floor. So the production yeah. floor, you, you cannot pass the security with paper or your cell phone, especially if you were an agent. As a trainer, I had a, bit, a little bit of, of a more relaxed kind of thing. But, of course, it depends what you bring. So... It was really painful to yeah. just be there doing nothing, you know, for a little while. That is, that is so, this is where I, I'd say for everyone, just when, when you think to yourself, I hate my job, I hate my commute, it's not, remember what some people go through, right? Yeah, like, it's, and, it's so and, easy to not. And understand. I don't blame them. So, so I don't blame them because um, they do have their own departments, okay? So it's, there are some departments that are overworked, sure. right? Right. Right. So, so I would have a department that was overworked and I would say like, okay, let me go ahead and help them out. But I had some restrictions because I'm not from that department. Um, actually, I had to get permission for it. If I didn't get it, I couldn't do it. If I was there helping, well, the, the agents are actually taking calls. They're not actually asking for my help all the time. So I was just standing there until somebody needed help. <laughs> so again, it was, it, was, it was a little bit complicated. For some people, that's awesome getting money for doing nothing right for others like me i can't my mind would drive me nuts no and i think most of the people who are doing stuff with auto hotkey they would also agree i love people comment in here and just say like you know yeah because for me just i just can't do it nothing for nine hours a day and then having to drive and back and forth you know like right i would just I, i i just told them like okay hold on if there's no training, help me out in here, okay? I, I'm, I'm not going to ask you for more money or whatever. Just right. can you at least 
let me work from home because they do have some systems to work at home. Um, and I would say like, okay, then, then help me out on that. Nope. And I was like, okay, dude. Well, you know, I, it's interesting because it, you wouldn't think it's related at all. But um, one of my favorite books, if I had the influence to be able to force everyone to, in the planet to read one book, it would be Thomas Sowell's, uh, his basic economics book. And it's such an amazing thing, but he talks about the differences in different cultures and everything and stuff in economics. But in Russia, because in this example, he talks a lot about it in Russia, how people, they were so afraid to do anything different than what was dictated by their motherland, like, because it was basically central planning, deciding stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, oh, hey, we're, we're running low on green shovels, but we need red ones. And if you decided to change at all, like you could not only be, you know, possibly even killed, but you know, put off to what's it called? Not Siberia. Um, I forget what the gulag and whatnot to work no, forever, yeah. right? Like, so no one went out of their way to ever do any decisions. Like, kind of like y your bosses are saying, you know, like there was this mindset of like we can't, that. we can't it change matter. at all. It's just like that, yeah. I'm I'm sticking my head up, and I'm going to get it chopped off, right? There's a risk. I don't get rewarded. There's just really only risk for doing this. And so it, it, it had this fear, which is another, by the way, amazing movie, even if you can watch just the first 15 minutes of it, is uh, Stalin, The Death of Stalin. Like mm. the very beginning, the first mm -hmm. 15 minutes, even if you don't watch the whole movie, which is incredible, you really, they, you, you, are, you are in knots of just understanding how much fear these people were living in like of just every second, just thinking they could be shot and killed, you know, just by this dictator that just didn't care about it. Yeah, exactly. And that's the thing. When you live like that, it is the, the, yeah. the way how you operate is totally different. And you have to, well, you don't have to, but it would be good if you can appreciate that or understand what is going on. There are some people who might work differently than you. And it, it is not really because you're better or because you're, it might be no, because I, of how they are, how right. their circumstances are right, right. now. That can right. happen. 100%. Of course, there are lazy people. <laughs> That's there right. Are, yeah, sure. There yeah. are cowards. Right. <clears throat> but right. you should try to see the situation before actually doing well, that. And it's an interesting thing. And there's actually a, an experiment done in the States, uh, you know, 30, 40 years ago with um, marshmallows with kids. And they would basically do tests to see. They would tell the kids, hey, here's five marshmallows, but if you wait five minutes, you'll get 15 more, right, kind of thing. Right. And they were seeing who, who out of the kids delayed the gratification for later to get the bigger payout, right, And which was interesting. But what was interesting is they, they followed up with it like 15 or 20 years later. And those kids that had delayed their gratification, they were so much more successful, right? And it was just one of those things, like, I don't know if you can teach this to kids, right, to understand that delayed gratification is better for you, right? Don't spend everything on your credit cards right away because then you have all your loans, right, because you have all that extra interest on the stuff. Exactly. It's not good for you. But um, it was really fascinating that there are people, for whatever reason, who are willing or able to delay what they can do now and think long-term and, you know, and, and reap the rewards later. But it's, you know, it's a much later thing that it, it takes you to discipline. It is. Um and I hoped that, you know, it was possible to do that. But certain situations yeah. <clears throat> make you have to, as you mentioned, you have some money in your pocket. Like, okay, let's save it. Yeah. Okay. Right. But what about tomorrow you get mugged? Okay, right. No, I'm going to keep it at home. Yeah. Which, what about if right. tomorrow you go ahead and get robbed? Like, it, right. just, it didn't change right. the fact. Yeah. You know, so, so, so then you have this, okay, let's keep it in the bank. Yeah. But the banks is getting a lot of interest penalties and stuff. The, the money disappears really quickly in the bank. Wow. Because if you don't, if you don't have a specific amount on your account, oh, they take, because like, of the fees, okay. They yeah. take fees. Yeah. They, they take a lot of things yeah. that you, you probably don't even remember. Right. Uh, so it is. For, in this situation, it is not a good well, thing to plan yeah. ahead. Yeah, because you don't know what's up. Sure. Yeah, it, it it's a it's a better to actually use your resources now. Right and now, right? Oh. Because nobody's gonna take your milk away. 
You know, right. gonna another make great, another milk. <laughs> a great lesson I have, and I forget what book I read it in, but it was really fascinating. Was is like, let's say you have kids, right? Mm-hmm. And you know, if you know, if you have kids, if you have a, tw- and I say kids because it has to be like three or four kids, right? You give a, you put a twelve pack of soda in the fridge, it will be gone crazy fast, right? Mm-hmm. Because why? Because everyone's a free for all. Hey, if I don't drink them now, someone else is going to drink them, drink right? <laughs> but if you take that 12 pack, let's say you have three kids on each of four cans, you write each kid's name. These are your Cokes. These are your Cokes. These are yours. And these are yours. The, the 12 pack lasts incredibly longer because now it's private ownership. I own this. Oh, I, I can consume I it when I want to, right? It gets back to that kind of security kind of thing of knowing mm-hmm. it's going to be there. I'm going to make it last, right? It, 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 yeah. The security actually drives you into thinking right. long term. Um, yeah. The insecurity here makes everybody. It, we have something that you don't even know, like the kiosks here. Like you have something similar over there, which is like in the on the on the um, gas stations. You have this that you can purchase certain household things and certain yeah. okay yeah little tiny things. Just imagine that, but that's not a gas station, right? But in here, it is like a store for Everywhere. that. It is yeah. a store for tiny things that if you're missing one toilet paper, you can go right. and purchase one toilet paper, right? Yeah. <laughs> like you can do that. But there's there everywhere is the most common thing everybody actually purchases on a daily basis instead of actually going to the supermarket and purchasing a pack it's kind of like that most of the people there are some people who actually go to the supermarket well and what's fascinating is a sad because all those extra they're basically middlemen right there are other people who they buy the the case and then they divide it up and then they sell it. So in the in that, I think it was in the Soul Economics book, but it might have been, I've read almost everything from him and he's written a lot of books. Yeah. But he talks about how in Nigeria or somewhere in Africa, people like stand outside stores and they'll buy a pack of cigarettes and they sell down to like a fragment of a cigarette, oh, wow. right? Because people can't afford an, one cigarette, right? So they sell Whoa. partial cigarettes, right? But he talks about how all... Every time you add a middleman, of course, the middleman takes a little chunk for himself, right? right? And that ends up being why things cost so much because you have all these extra little hands taking little you know bits out of the adding little cost to it, right? But it's it's spot on. I totally understand what you're saying of how high prices and everything, right? Because it, and the thing is, they are adding value because they can't afford. The full thing, nor should they even buy it because someone would probably end up breaking in and taking their case of toilet paper. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so, yeah. in general, those are the kind of like diff- the, the the differences and how people think. And if we relate it to Auto Hotkey, um, when we go ahead and um, learn this stuff, you are adding value to yourself I, in a way that actually opens doors for you. I was going to say it's a great. I'm really glad you said. Let's bring it back to it, right? Because. It's one of, it was in that newsletter I said the other day. The great thing about auto hotkey is you are investing in yourself. And unless you have a stroke or something, right? Like you people can't steal that knowledge. You know what I mean? It, it's invested in you. You are worth more. And hey, you know what? It's why people can walk across a border without actually carrying anything and be worth millions of dollars because of the knowledge in their head, right? Of how they know how to do things. Exactly. Right. It, it's in, in, it's a, it's amazing thing. I mean, obviously with auto hotkey, it may not be millions of dollars, but um, it is true when you invest in yourself, right. It is, it's worth it. And it's the one thing people can't steal. I mean, thankfully. <laughs> exactly. And even though you might not, for example, work for a company that does auto hotkey, but you can create your own programs and sell them, or you can right. actually just teach other people and you can sell that there are so many ways that you can sell your knowledge uh, even if you're not doing it uh, um, right now but yeah you have or, knowledge that other people might need or which is and, and sadly maybe this wasn't why they were really trying to keep you like i said i know you have a good work ethic so that's one reason why they were trying to keep you but at your other jobs i know this was the case you wrote some stuff that made everyone more efficient and i know you worked at other call centers right you made tools that helped all the employees be more efficient Right. And it, it really increases your job security, right? Because right. they really want – and the problem is a lot, sometimes the, the managers don't have a, a way to make it – they can't pay you more, let you work from home, do whatever, because it's out of their control. 
And, That's and, what I said. Yeah, exactly. In that case, on my situation, it was like, I would not tell them to pay me more. I know that they can't. Right. What if they pay me more? They're going to have to pay all the others more. Right. <laughs> you know, so, so it, they cannot be in that position and so on. I, I would give you options or whatever, but if you don't want it, yeah, that's okay. It's not a big deal. I, I say it from a position of actually having an option. But if you don't even invest on in yourself and you don't have knowledge and you don't have anything, you're, you're stuck into whatever you have, even if you don't like it. <laughs> so, right. Well, and that, yeah, and I think that hopefully that's the main point we kind of come away from this. Yeah. A is hopefully people learned a lot about other people's, you know, perspectives yeah. and lives and how yeah. maybe good they have it, right? When, when, when they don't realize it. But B is, yeah, invest in yourself. It's the one good thing you can do. And auto hockey is one of those great things you can do with that. Yep, that's right. Awesome, man. Well, and again, I'm, I'm so happy to have you back. Um, it's yeah, fun day 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 working, but also we're, we're, we got some cool stuff in the hopper here. We're getting yeah. ready to, to get on. All right. Talk soon. Talk later.